Okay, so what do we have here? Well, hopefully you recognize this as a formula. It's certainly an equation, but this happens to be a formula, a temperature conversion formula, where if we know our temperature in degrees Celsius, we can figure out the equivalent temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And just in case you forgot, Celsius is uh, the temperature unit of measure that's commonly used in places like Europe, and Fahrenheit is what we use here in the United States. So if we know our degrees, again, in Celsius, we would plug it in right here, do this math, and we would get our equivalent temperature in Fahrenheit. So if you notice, though, this formula is written in terms of F. In other words, we're solving for F based upon uh, knowing our Celsius, okay, uh, reading. But well, let's suppose we wanted to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Well, we would like to have a nice, lovely uh, formula where it's C is equal to, right? So the input instead of C would be Fahrenheit. We would plug that into whatever numbers, and we would be solving for C. So that's really the task of this particular problem is rewrite this formula in terms of C or solve this equation 4C, and if you're studying any sort of algebra in any kind of math class, okay, you could be taking pre-algebra, algebra one, college algebra, it doesn't make a difference. You need to know how to solve for a particular variable when there's more than uh, uh, one variable in an equation. And this is very common in not only uh, math classes like algebra, but in uh, science classes like physics, chemistry, etc. Okay, so if you think you could do this problem, Put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the solution here in a second. Of course, I'm going to go through this step by step, but this is an extremely important algebra skill, and it tends to confuse a lot of students as well. But anyways, I'm going to show you the answer here in a moment, and we'll uh, go ahead and walk through exactly how to solve a problem like this. But uh, before we do that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you could be successful in mathematics, and I'm speaking to all of you, especially those of you that struggle in math, but what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of a test uh, you're studying for, something like the SAT, ACT, GED, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you homeschool, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. Um, I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover all these various categories. It will really help you out big time. Now, as a math student, you should be taking excellent notes, but if your notes are so-so, work on approving your notes, but in the meantime, you can use my notes. I'm gonna leave links to those in the description of this video as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer now. And there you go, all right? So given this formula, and uh, of course this formula is written in terms of F, or, it's, or F is equal to 9 fifths C plus 32. Uh, if we solve this for C, we would end up with this formula. There's actually another variation of this, but this is the most common answer. So this is the answer to the question. And if you got this right, well, this deserves a very nice happy face and A plus plus a 120% and multiple stars, so you can feel extra special for being awesome in math day, all right? That's a nice job that you're able to solve uh, this particular formula or equation for C, okay? All right, now, if you weren't able to do this problem, uh, don't, uh, you know, panic, all right? Because I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to think about how to do these, uh, solve these type of problems, and again, if you are studying algebra, uh, this topic that we're talking about here is, it falls under the unit or chapter where you're studying equations, all right? How to solve basic equations like one-step equations, two-step equations, multi-step equations, but somewhere in that unit or chapter that you're studying, there should be some sort of topic like solving literal equations or solving for a specified variable or something with formulas. That is the section that we are talking about, just in case this video caught your eye and you're like, yeah, I'm struggling with this on my algebra course. This is the uh, kind of subtopic. It's going to fall under your unit or chapter in solving equations, okay? Now, if you need extra help on this stuff, I'll give you some suggestions at the end of the video, but let's go ahead and get into actually how to solve this problem. All right, so here is the problem. And again, we want to solve 
this equation for C, all right? Or, and another way to uh, write that is to write this in terms of C, which means just reshuffle this, um, uh, everything in this equation such that we have C is equal to, not, is F, not F is equal to. But before we do this problem, let's do a nice easy problem first so we can just kind of get the concepts down on how to solve uh, uh, for C in that um, temperature conversion formula. So here's a nice little formula here, okay? And uh, for those of you who don't recognize this, this is a physics, for physics formula, and its force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, this formula is written in terms of F, all right? I.e., its F is equal to. But let's go ahead and rewrite this formula in terms of A, which means so we want to go ahead and solve for A. So how do we do that? Well, here is how you do these type of problems. So the, uh, the variable you're trying to solve for, in this case, it's A. Uh, this is the only variable you're going to think of as a variable when you solve uh, um, this equation, okay? Now, I, that's kind of confusing, so let me go ahead and, and make this clear. We're gonna treat A as a variable, and we're gonna treat F and M as numbers. So let's kind of make up a counter um, example here. Not a counter example, just another example to make this clear. So F is equal to M times A. So we're gonna solve for A. So let's just think of F as some number, maybe like 10, all right? Just temporarily, it could be any number. And M is, uh, let's say, uh, two, okay? It could be any number. But the whole idea here is we're treating these as number numbers, and we're going to treat A as the variable we're trying to solve for as a variable. So let's leave that as a variable. So 10 is equal to 2A. So how do we solve uh, for A in this equation here? Well, hopefully you're like, oh, don't we just divide both sides of the equation by 2? So 10 divided by 2 would be equal to A. That would be absolutely correct. Okay, so you can see the steps uh, to take. So you're like, all right, so F is equal to M times A. I'm solving for A. I'm writing this equation or um, or formula in terms of A. So I'm going to think of this as a variable. And in my mind's eye, I'm going to think of these as numbers, M and A. So this would be like a 2A. It's, it's a coefficient. So I could divide both sides of this equation by M. Okay, so I'm going to end up with A is equal to F over M. Okay, so this is a nice uh, it's kind of easy formula or equation to get used to the concepts here, right? Again, the form, the variable you're trying to solve for is the only thing you're going to treat as a variable. The rest of the variables you're going to treat as numbers. And if you get confused, it's good to just kind of do an example problem where you replace those other variables with some numbers just so you can kind of get a feel of the steps you need to take. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this problem now, being that you have a sense of what to do. So here's the problem. We want to rewrite this thing in terms of C. So we're going to treat C as a variable. Okay, so you can see I've, I have it highlighted. But we're going to treat F as just a number. So in our mind's eye, just think of F as a number. Now, when you're solving equations, uh, it's customary. Now, we have the variable we're trying to solve for on the left-hand side. So for example, uh, you would write 2x is equal to 8, right? That could be an equation. The variable we're trying to solve for is on the left, okay? We wouldn't write 8 is equal to 2x, but if you were given this equation, 8 is equal to 2x, where the variable's over here, you can simply just uh, flip the sides, okay? You can, uh, this is the left is equal to right, or the right is equal to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this side of the equation, the, uh, uh, it happens to be the right side, I'm going to put this on the left-hand side, okay? So effectively, um, the variable that I'm solving for will be on the left, okay? And so I'm going to put this on the other side. You can do that. There's no issue with that. So that's the first thing I'm going to do just to kind of keep this nice and easy uh, when I'm thinking about, uh, you know, what steps to take. All right, so let's go ahead and take our first step. So here I have 9 fifths C plus 32 is equal to F. Now, if you need an example uh, and you're like, okay, I'm not quite sure what to do. Well, just make something up. Let's say even use a different um, uh, variable. What if I had 9 fifths X plus 32 is equal to, I don't know, let's say 40, All right? Well, to do this problem, you certainly need to solve, know how to solve um, kind of basic algebraic equations. If you don't know how to solve like one-step, multi-step equations, then you're not going to be able to do these type of problems. So that's kind of my first suggestion 
uh, if you're confused about this already, it's like, all right, do you really need even know how to solve equations with just one variable? If you do not, you need to go back and review that. Okay, I'll give you some suggestions on how you can do that. But you got to first stop and think, do I even know what steps to do here, right? Hopefully, in this particular problem, you would know the first thing you need to do is subtract 32 from both sides of the equation. And then, uh, you know, that, well, before I get too far ahead on this particular problem, that's our first step, okay? Hopefully, you know, that is the first step, and that's the first step we need to do here, okay? So 9 fifths C plus 32 is equal to F. What we need to do is subtract 32 from both sides of the equation. So let's go ahead and do that here. We're going to subtract that 32. We can write it just like this. And when we um, uh, look at the results of doing this, we have 9 fifths C. We're going to kind of add down in a column manner. So 9 fifths C plus nothing is 9 fifths C. 32 minus 32 is 0. And then F minus 32, we can write it this way. All right. Okay, so that is like our first step. And again, if you get confused, and right, a lot of students do, is just make yourself an example problem. But if you're confused with this, then, you know, again, uh, you need to go back and review uh, basic equations. All right, so what do we do now? Okay, we're pretty close. We have 9 fifths C. We want to solve for C. Well, let me give you um, a little suggestion. Anytime you have a variable and it's involved in a sum or a difference, i.e. you're adding it or subtracting it to any other values like numbers or other variables, always put uh, parentheses around that group. Okay, use grouping symbols. This can help avoid a lot of confusion later down the line. This is a good habit to get in. If uh, a lot of students, if they left this, if they uh, left their work just like this, they did put parentheses in there, you can make mistakes later down the line. And um, anyways, just blame me on this. It's a good habit just to be like, okay, F minus 32. Let me put some parentheses around that group. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve for C. Okay, so here I have 9 fifths C is equal to parentheses F minus 32. What do I need to do? Well, the easiest way to do this problem is to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. Okay, so here's 9 fifths. If I multiply this side of the equation by 5 ninths, 5 ninths times 9 fifths, or sorry, 5 ninths times 9 fifths is going to be 1. Uh, it's going to result in 1C or C. Okay, this is going to be C right here, right? So it's going to be 45 over 45, which is 1 or 1C one or C. And that's what I'm looking to get is just C. But if I multiply this side of the equation by 5 ninths, I got to multiply this side over here by 5 ninths as well. So the way I'm going to write that, though, instead of uh, having my 5 ninths over here, like I have, like so, okay, I'm going to put that multiplication in front of that so this can look nice and organized, look very much like a formula when we're all done with this. Okay, so 5 ninths times 9 fifths C is 1C, or C, and that's going to be equal to 5 ninths times this group right here. And this is the answer. Now... Uh, this is one form of the answer. Now, some of you are like, you know, might be saying to yourself, well, do I have to distribute this 5 ninths? Do I have to multiply it by that F and that 32? Well, you could, okay? You certainly could. And if you uh, did that, you would come up with this uh, equivalent uh, formula. And you could even turn this into uh, decimals as well if you wanted to. But basically, the formula that I would be looking for if I was your math teacher is this. Okay, so we just saw 4C uh, given our formula for uh, Fahrenheit. Now, the one thing that you want to um, keep in mind is that, well, you have a different formula. Did we, um, you, know, you know, break anything in terms of the actual, you know, relationship between uh, uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit? No, okay, uh, the Celsius or the, the relationship between the temperatures is the same. We're just expressing it differently, okay? These two formulas are effectively equivalent, okay? They're saying the same thing. They're uh, relating the, um, uh, the, it's basically establishing the relationship between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but we're just writing these formulas in different ways. This one's written in terms of F, and this one is written in terms of C. So this is something you're going to have to be uh, very, very comfortable with, not only in algebra courses, but in science courses as well. And again, this can be very confusing. So let me go ahead and give you some guidance, as I kind of um, uh, promised before. So if you're struggling uh, with these type of problems, first thing is make sure you know how to solve equations. So 
I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on uh, all sorts of basic equations and more advanced equations. So get really, really good at equations. I would suggest uh, my, in terms of my courses, uh, my pre-algebra course, my algebra one course are great places to start because in those particular uh, chapters, after you learn how to solve equations, you want to uh, next go into how to solve for a specified variable given more than one variable in an equation or how to work with formulas, etc. Okay, so those are the two courses I would recommend. But if this particular video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.